Hello everyone and a happy Christmas to you all. I hope Santa had lots of lovely things in his bulging sack for you and uh, you're relaxed and ready to watch one of my Christmas videos. It's only a Christmas special because I'm wearing my Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer jumper and I've put some twinkly lights on the Hoover Turbo Power 3 behind me and of course I've got a roaring fire uh, I hope this Electrolux 506 doesn't melt. Right, well I'm just going to get straight down to it because apart from this video, I've got the shout out video to do for the younger vacuum fans. So, and that's also today. I might have uploaded that. I think I'll upload that first actually. So, if you're an adult or older, you may be sitting there full of Christmas dinner and a bit of alcohol and chocolate, feeling a bit woozy. And what better way to send yourself to sleep than watching one of my videos. Excellent for insomniacs. I'm just going to read through them. I've selected newest first. So if you're one of the first to comment, you might be one of the last I respond to. So let's, uh, let's get on with it. I can't pronounce this. <laughs> Arda Yijit Gudal says... Arnica Tesla Premium Silver. Not really sure where. I don't think that's a question, but I'm reading it out for you. Make of that as you will. Mark Cobra 11. He says, Hey Roger, I follow you for years and I like you and your videos. Shark is starting to be comment here in Germany. I would like to know if the edge cleaning is good on the latest cordless. I have 95% hard floor stone and around my kitchen the V8 Absolute I use is not that great there as e.g. my Miele S8 with Parquet Twister Head. I'm assuming Mark's uh, probably German so that's why the English is a little bit, you know. But uh, he's probably got better English than I have German. I only know one German word, and that's Staub, 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 I think that's it. Right. Well, for you, Mark, I will get the latest Shark cordless because I think I've still got it out somewhere, and I will test the edge cleaning um, because you have 95 percent hard floor. I think I've done the edge cleaning on the video. It was around this time last year. That's the latest Shark cordless I've got. In fact, the latest Shark vacuum, well, no, there's one new Shark vacuum that I have bought that you'll see next year. Daniel Robinson asks, what's the best carpet cleaner? And Merry Christmas, Roger. I don't know what the best carpet cleaner is because I haven't used them all. Anyone that can say categorically this is the best hasn't hasn't used every single carpet cleaner. They can't have. They've got their own opinions. I've got my own opinions. So at the moment, my opinion is the Bissell um, Revolution Pet Pro that I've recently unboxed and you'll be seeing demonstrations of that. For my personal use, it's the best. It's not, <laughs> it's not perfect as no appliance is but it's the best I've found it's got pros and cons but for me personally it's the best one and I've used you know I have used a lot I've used the big rug doctors um, many many cleaners I wouldn't recommend Vax products um, at all to be honest the last Vax product I bought I bought another 6131 the tub cleaner which is now discontinued the pump on that failed within weeks and I hardly used it. And when I complained to Vax, they said, take it back to the shop. And yet on the, on the Vax instructions and probably on the box, it says, do not take back to your retailer. So Vax, you know, Bissell isn't the best quality either. Uh, but for me, it's a compromise. Anyway, I would say that at the moment, if I, if and when I get to use other carpet washers I will maybe give a different result if you want a machine to do above floor cleaning if you want one just for your upholstery your stairs car valeting then I'd go for a pneumatic George um, 
if you don't want the dry pickup, then a Henry wash. Um, I find those um, very good for above floor, but not so good for carpets. Thank you for your question, uh, Daniel. Alexander Wilson, where do you see the future of vacuums heading? Do you see bagged cleaners making a comeback and a return to more powerful corded cleaners? Well, I think we're um, stuck with lower wattage corded cleaners. I don't know cleaners. I don't know where you live, Alexander. But if you live in an EU country, we will still be bound by the EU regulations regarding the wattage of vacuum cleaners. We have left the EU in the UK, despite what some people say. We have actually left uh, at the moment. Might have been decided, but they're trying to get some sort of trade deal. But we have actually left the EU. But the laws are still applicable to us until the 31st, I think it is. But the laws that are already in place as far as EU um, regulations will still be there unless the government at the time decides to repeal them or change them. But I think lower wattage vacuums are here to stay. There may be a way of some companies um, bringing in higher wattage for this country. I don't know. So I, I don't make a secret of liking bagged vacuum cleaners better than bagless there's a place for both but personally i think bagged vacuum cleaners are going to remain in a niche a niche market and it's going to be certain discerning consumers who will search out bagless bagged sorry bagged and a lot of people are actually going back to bagged i have found that i've re read quite a lot of reviews and a lot of people who bought a bagged vacuum cleaner have said oh, it's a much easier and less messy way to get rid of the dirt than my old whatever brand it was. I won't mention names. So some people are finding that bags are better as far as hygiene and dirt disposal. I still think bagless cleaners will have the market share, the main market share. I don't know the figures, but of course cordless cleaners have made huge inroads and I would say, I mean, the, the number of cordless vacuum cleaners on the market is huge compared to what it used to be, you know, with the little, starting with the Black & Decker Dust Buster in the 80s and then we had various other incarnations of cordless cleaners that were pretty pathetic and they were only seen as a supplementary cleaner to use alongside your big mains powered upright or cylinder but of course now they're being sold as a replacement they're not not in my opinion i've not found any cordless cleaner that i'd be happy to have to have as my only vacuum cleaner i recently purchased a shark uh, cordless for my brother he was looking he needed a new vacuum he lives in a tiny flat bare floors couple of rugs so for him it's a cordless cleaner is fine but for even an average home three bedroom semi in the uk Personally, unless you've got mainly hard floors, you still need to supplement your cordless. But cordless cleaners, I see them. Yes, they're, become, they're going to become even more prevalent in the marketplace. They're going to develop the technology, so they're going to be even more powerful. They're going to have longer run times. So I think that the market for cordless is going to definitely go up and the market for corded cleaners will plateau and go down, start to go down. It's like when automatic washing machines were introduced. Now I'm not that old to remember that, but there was a time when of course people, twin tubs, twin tub washing machines were the most popular in the UK. That's how people used to wash their clothes. And then the automatic was introduced and the first automatics like the Hoover Keymatic were very, very expensive and they were new and some people bought them, you know, the early adopters and Eventually, more and more people started buying automatics. The prices came down. Then twin tubs became a niche. They were still available, but only to a certain number of people would buy a twin tub. And then twin tubs are virtually unheard of now, apart from the plastic, little plastic ones you can buy. Or um, I think uh, there is a brand that does full-sized ones, but again, they're plastic. But they have a tiny percentage of the market. Everyone else would buy an automatic washing machine. So I see that happening in the vacuum market. One thing I think might happen if this green agenda keeps going, because we don't know the long-term effects of all these battery-powered appliances, you know, how green 
is the production of the batteries are they recycled properly and I think cordless cleaners need to have replaceable batteries that the user can replace so you know a lot of machines once the battery has gone people will just throw away the machine of course better cordless cleaners in my opinion are the ones that have a battery you can take in and out so so basically, no, I don't see a return to more powerful corded cleaners unless they change the law. I think we're stuck with lower wattage ones. Most of the lower wattage ones I found to be okay, but they do have less suction when I've compared like for like. But they seem okay for most people. And of course, back in the day, we used to have low wattage, you know, this, like this Electrolux 500 odd watts picks up perfectly. In fact, that picks up better than some modern cleaners. So we don't need high wattage. So yes, bagged cleaners will remain a niche and continue to decline. Corded cleaners will continue to rise. I don't like that scenario, but I think that's what's going to happen because people outside the vacuum cleaner community, such as it is, think differently to the people that are interested in vacuums in, uh, you know, like we are. So um, I hope that's answered your question, Alexander. LG Washer 27. 2017 sorry um, hello Roger for everyday vacuuming do you use a combination of machine types upright cylinder cordless etc or do you generally use just one more than the other many thanks and have a great Christmas well I do use a combination definitely and I use a combination of what you say I use a combination of an upright a cylinder and cordless um, the type of cleaner I use the most is mains powered upright and at the moment I'm using a SIBO Felix which I did mean to have in the picture it's over there <laughs> so that's the one I prefer to use for the quick whip round all around the house for more in-depth cleaning if I want to you know vacuum out my drawers if I want to do all the edges if I want to get right under the furniture get the cobwebs then I tend to use a mains powered cylinder and the cordless cleaners come out occasionally if I just can't be bothered just to get the corded cleaner out and I'll just grab a cordless and just have a quick whip round but I know it's just personally I feel it's just a cosmetic clean it's not a proper clean I never feel that things are properly clean it's just just to make the carpets and floors look better but it's not in my opinion it's not going to get deep down dirt out especially with this plush carpet I've got in my living room so and apart from that of course I use cleaners that I've recently unboxed or just fancy using them for nostalgic reasons you know I'm using this uh, yeah I think you can see it in the picture this perma bag uh, turbo turbo power 3 it's got a bag in it though and I'm using that because it is good I can use that all around it's got a stair cleaning hose I can vac all around with that I haven't really done the kitchen floor with it but all the carpets and the stairs and stuff that's fine to use and I like using it and maybe I'll get out a 70s vacuum like this Junior Deluxe and have a play with that. So it just depends on my mood. Um, but yeah, I use an upright, mains powered upright most, I would say. Now, Nathan Crombie has a very ugly picture. I don't think that is Nathan. That looks like a very nasty man um, in that picture, Nathan so you're either lying about your name or that isn't your picture but why you choose to picture that person i won't say his name because if you repeat his name three times the devil appears so i won't say it anyway the question is roger what would you say is the best value for money dyson cordless well i'm just gonna have a drink sorry about that uh, now this is uh three quarters um, gin and one quarter fruit juice so by the end of this video I'll be oh, I love you now it's completely um, alcohol free a little bit of sparkling water and fruit juice now there we go put that there now the, <laughs> the best value for money I mean I, I saw this question and thought I can't answer this because you know, you you pay more for a Dyson depending on what you want. You know, I think this, they start now at the V7. I don't know if there's still a V8. I think there's still a V8. So there's V7, V8, V10 and V11. So the best value Dyson is basically the one 
that you want to buy, the one that you can afford, and the one you're prepared to spend your money on. Um, you know, if you want to be what's perceived as the best, you buy a V11. But if you're not so bothered about some of the features of the V11, the V10 is, you know, for performance-wise, it's almost the same. It's not a lot to choose between them. So you might save 100, 150 pound and get the V10. Uh, if you just want a cordless cleaner, the cheapest, then it's you go for V7. And I think even the V7s now have the cleaner bin emptying where the whole bin moves up and it clears the shroud. So I can't, you know, just buy whatever you want to buy. Um, obviously, shop around. That's my suggestion to anyone looking for uh, anything, not just a vacuum. Shop around. And you, you could save money. You could save 50, 100 pounds between different retailers. And it's easy to shop around on the internet. Just buy what you can afford, buy one with the longest guarantee. Um, it's completely up to you, but I can't say there is one single best value for money Dyson cordless because they're all different. Anyway, I hope that's answered your question. Uh, Tenoshi, I think that is. What do you think of the Shark Vertex Duo Clean with 0M Vac? Well. This person is not from the UK because we don't have the Shark Vertex. We probably have it, but it's called something else. I've liked um, certain Shark cleaners. I can't comment on that particular one because I don't know what model that is in the UK. I expect being a 0M, it's got the uh, hair anti-hair wrap brush roll that a lot of people say doesn't work but it is supposed to work as you use the machine. So it's not supposed to work straight away. Apparently it's supposed to free up the brush roll, free up the hair off the brush roll with continuous use. So don't look at it after one use and see that it's all got hair around it, especially if you picked up loads of hair. I would only judge it after a month of use and you can look at the roll, the roller then. And if it's covered in hair, then it doesn't work. I don't know. So um, I, I don't think much, oh, well, I don't know what to think of them. The I do like the latest Shark Cordless I, I did last year. Now, that may be called Vertex in the USA. It's the best Shark Cordless I've used. Um, if you want to see that video, it was recorded this. I think I've got this jumper on in it. So I'll, I'll see. Shark have had a, new, a few new cleaners out recently, but nothing to interest me. I always say that I have bought a new Shark handheld that's a brand new design. But as far as uprights and cordless, they haven't um, wowed me with anything. So I'm not going to spend any more money on sharks until there is something that's worthy of my attention that's new. I mean, quite a bit different to what's coming out at the moment. They're, they're just, you know, I think they've sort of stalled their um, designing. And this year, perhaps a lot of manufacturers have sort of put some designs and, and, um, and ideas on hold while we're going through what we're going through. So maybe next year we'll start to see some brand new designs from all manufacturers. Okay, Andrew states, hi Roger, my question is, this year has been a tough one for many. Oh, I hate questions like this. I'm gonna answer a similar way to I've answered before. Anyway, sorry, this year has been a tough one for many. What is the best vacuum cleaner under a hundred pounds, many thanks, Andy. I can't answer that because to to know that I would have had to purchase every single vacuum cleaner that costs under a hundred pounds and have to have tried it out in my own home. And even if I had done that, what I conclude may not be what you would conclude. So what I do in my videos, it's just guidance. It's just showing you things. It's not proper testing. It's just, you know, I'm an enthusiast. Um, I can give you my opinion of what works in my home, but I can't tell you because I don't know what your home's like. Anyone that can categorically state this is the best vacuum for you is lying or just trying to boost their sales because they cannot, unless they're in your house and living with you for a few months or a few weeks, they're not going to know your cleaning needs. You need to ask a lot of questions. I learned this from working in Curry's many years ago. The customer comes in wanting an appliance and in order to try and sell them the best appliance for them, 
are not the best appliance for you, not the best appliance that gives you the most commission, which I know that happened in Curry's. You need to ask them a lot of questions, find their needs, and you have to match their needs with a product. Um, so, you know, YouTube is very much one way, apart from today when I'm, you know, answering your questions. So, I would say then, if you want an answer, and this is only when it's on offer, I would get a pneumatic Henry. You can buy them occasionally for around £95, under £100. Fairly frequently, you'll see the standard Henry on offer. I saw it last couple of weeks ago for £95. So if that's the quick case, I would get that because it's pretty robust. It's made in the UK. Um, so if you want one answer, I will say a pneumatic Henry when it's on offer. Robot online. What's the best? Oh, crikey! <laughs> What's the best mid-priced carpet washer cleaner? Again, I will you know go back to the the previous answer. But mid-priced, personally, as far as brands go, I would avoid. As I said, I would avoid Vax, and possibly mid-priced. You see, I've used a, a compact Bissell, which I found quite good. Uh, it's on my channel. I can't remember the uh, the actual name of it. It's, it's the compact lighter Bissell, and that's a sort of mid-priced. But it depends when things are on offer. Things can be on offer and be mid-priced. They can normally be the higher end, but if they're reduced, then they become mid-priced. But personally, I would go for Bissell over Vax in, in that category. Um, but again, if you live in a big house, the mid-priced Bissell, the smaller ones, although there is, yeah, I'm, oh, I'll have to look then. There is a Bissell that did get a witch best buy, whether you believe, oh, I can't, oh dear, I'm not, I'm trying to, oh, here we are. Um, there is one that I've had before. This is just the updated one. I'll just have a quick look and it is on offer. And it's quieter than the uh, Revolution. Yes, all right, I'll accept, oh, I hate, accept the cookies. Well, they're not real cookies, are they? You're accepting. If I accepted every cookie on a website and it, that turned out to be a real cookie, I'd be even fatter than I am now. Right, I'm just whizzing through. Well, the, the small abyssal is the Ready Clean. And at the moment it's 120, but I've seen that on offer under 100. And, but if you want one that's got a bit more oomph, yeah, the Stain Pro 4, um, I would say, or the Stain Pro 6, both those types of cleaners I've had. And, you know, I found them more than adequate so there that's the answer to that one let's hope I can get back to the correct page da, 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 da. after I'm crossing my legs because my feet are going to sleep I can't pronounce this uh, is it uh, Kakpa Paulik hi could you do a supermarket vacuum week no sorry I won't be doing a supermarket vacuum week I haven't got I haven't got seven supermarket vacuum cleaners. Um, saying that, <laughs> I'm not going to do it as a week because I think they're mostly the same brand, but I have got a supermarket robotic vacuum, um, supermarket corded stick, a supermarket upright. I've probably got about four or five supermarket vacuums you haven't seen, but I don't plan on, plan on doing a week of those they'll be coming you know next year so I don't think I'll be doing a whole week of supermarket vacuums but I will be showing you some more supermarket vacuums at some point YX flyer hi Roger how would you keep your bagged vacuum from emitting pet pet order says here but it's I assume order is odor Meaning, before a bag needs to be changed, it starts smelling like a dirty dog and blows the air through the whole house. One vacuum I own, the Miele Maverick Upright, has a charcoal filter that helps a lot but doesn't stop it entirely. Thank you. You can't stop it. And, you know, obviously I've got dogs. 
I've got a C, but I'll go and I'll show you because I, I did polish it up for the video. Just hang on. This, this is a Felix, you know, I do like the Felix. Uh, this is the latest Felix I've bought. This is the pet version, which does have an upgraded filter. It also has a charcoal filter, pre-motor, which is supposed to reduce the odours. But after a while, this does smell, but you only notice the smell after the first couple of minutes and then you don't. So, and I've got Miele cleaners as well that have got those charcoal filters in that you shake and you can hear the bits of charcoal. They don't work, quite frankly. The only way of avoiding it is to change the bag more often than you would or use some sort of air freshener in the bag or in the bag compartment. I would avoid putting certain air fresheners on the exhaust vent. One, because they won't last very long because the exhaust air is warm or hot. So the fragrance will go pretty quickly. And you have to be careful with some things to put in vacuum cleaners because they can attack the plastic. So if the manufacturer actually sell an air freshener designed for the vacuum, use that. It can help. It doesn't eliminate, but it can mask the smell you get from a vacuum. There are more eco-friendly ways of doing it. You can take some cotton wool and you can put some essential oil, natural essential oils on it, whatever smell you like, lavender, orange, eucalyptus, pop that inside the dust bag and that will work for a certain amount of time. And I believe you can put some bicarbonate of soda, which can help absorb odors, put that in the bag, but you'll never eliminate it. That's really for me, the only disadvantage of bagged cleaners, they can smell. So, and I've never found a cleaner that doesn't, um, and what I tend to do, because I don't often use a cleaner all the time, I would leave it and then it can smell worse if you leave it for a while, a few weeks, and then you decide to use it again. Obviously the stuff in the bag may be smellier than it would have been if you continually use it. But anyway, oh, oh dear. Well, there is a, a van delivering something, so I better go and see who it is. Right, sorry about that. Yes, it was uh, Amazon, not a vacuum cleaner. It was a little present I'd bought for somebody. Hello, Daisy May. She's, uh, she heard the doorbell and came rushing down, didn't oh. you? Yes. So, um, yes, I'm due a vacuum, but that, I, that won't come till next year because it's coming from Germany. It's another Sibo Felix. Uh, it's a Sibo Felix Fun, the orange coloured one. I've wanted one of those for a while. I don't know why I bought it because it's just the same as this, more or less. Well, apart from the filter. Right, where was I? Oh dear. Right. Oh yes, well, so I've answered the question hopefully about smelly vacuums and smelly dogs. Christian Moore, what's the rarest vacuum you own? I've no idea. Um, I don't think you haven't seen it yet, but I did recently unbox, you'll have seen it if you follow me on Instagram, but I recently unboxed a Hoover Wet and Dry Power Vac Super. That could be, I mean, it's not an exciting vacuum. It was from the uh, mid eighties, but I've never seen one. I never saw one when they were in the shops. I never bought one when they were in the shops. I don't know who sold them. And from the years and years of scrolling through eBay, the amount of hours I've spent doing that, I, I don't know, I could have had a second job. Um, so from the years and years of doing that, I've never seen one until recently, a few weeks ago, one turned up looking in a sorry state, I must say. But because it was so, I thought I've never seen that before. So that could be, you know, um, just by the fact that they probably didn't make that many. Well, they weren't made by Hoover. They were made by Goblin Shop Vac, I think in uh, Ireland. Um, so that could be the rarest, or it could be something else. I have no idea what the rarest one is. So I'm just trying to think what else I've got. I mean, I've got a national capsule um, vacuum cleaner that's shaped like a little footstool. I recently got another one of those on eBay. Turned out it was one I sold myself. So that must be fairly rare because you don't see many of those. 
I saw it on eBay and thought, oh, I wish I hadn't sold the one I had. And it turned out I'd bought back the one that um, I'd sold years ago. So that's quite rare, I would say. It's quite brittle plastic. Um, I can't really answer that. You know, I, I can't even think how I've got absolute, I don't know even how many vacuums I've got, let alone which is the rarest. But yeah, the, the Hoover wet and dry power vac super has to be quite rare. The fact that I've never seen one until really a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, I hope that's uh, enough of an answer. Uh, well, this is, I don't know if people realised, uh, I'm, I'm just reading out all the comments. I can't pronounce your name, I'm afraid, but uh, this chap con uh, comments quite a lot. Antoine, is it not? No, not Ant, not Anton. Antoine, Antoine White. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it. Nice looking Electrolux. You should do a refurb video of it. That's Electrolux 550. Um, I'm going to do some refurb videos, but that because that doesn't really need a big refurb, I'm not going to do that one. But yeah, more refurbs will be coming up hopefully uh, next year. Hackthorn Planning, what's the oldest vacuum cleaner you have in your collection and will you please show it? Thanks. Simon. Well, I can show you a picture. I can't show you it because I have no idea where it is. It's probably a Hoover Junior. Um, I can't remember the model number, but uh, this is a picture of it. This is what I think is the oldest mm, vacuum cleaner, but I do have an older appliance that has sort of suction and um, but it's pump operated I haven't I've never sh done a video I've shown it on Instagram that's one of the star vacuum cleaners with a wooden handle and sort of bellows and you basically hold on to it and you pump it to try and create the suction that would make quite a good video actually if I could remember where that is so that's probably the oldest the oldest electric cleaner it's either a dust at model 100 or I'd say it was that junior that junior I think that's the oldest and I'm not sure on the date of it but I'd say that is that's all you're getting to see because I don't know where it is I think it's in the top loft actually I think I saw it when I got my Christmas decorations out but I can't get it down now I've got to get through this anyway Tyler, I can't pronounce your surname. Is it Servac? What's your... F oh, I always get asked this. What's your favourite vacuum cleaner you have owned or used? <laughs> How long is a piece of string, Tyler? I don't know. You know, I can tell you what... <laughs> I, I tend to favour Hoover cleaners. Not now. Hoover cleaners now are the pits of the earth, you know, the... Chinese-owned company, Chinese-made. Hoover's gone. The legacy of Hoover is down the toilet. Um, I've all, I'm a, I can't say. I will. I will. I will get it down to two types and two ranges of cleaner. The range of cleaner I like the best, and there was many different models and and different shapes. The Hoover Sensotronic for cylinder cleaner and I would say the Hoover Turbo Master for uprights. They would be the sort of pinnacle and they're the type of cleaners I'll always keep in my collection alongside look, look, 70s machines like this Junior Deluxe. You know, my Constellations, my Celebrities, my Seniors, anything like that. And I've got a soft spot for sort of the Electrolux 500 upright range. So. I can't, I can never, ever get it down. It's like asking me what's my favourite album, what's my favourite film. I can't. I can give you a top 10 or a top 5, but I can never, you know, get it down to one. Unfortunately, I don't have to. But, um, yeah. If I had to use one vacuum, if I was told you can only have one vacuum to use as a cleaner, then I'd have to go modern and I'd have to go new and it would be a SIBO of some sort, probably 
D E3 premium or D4 premium if I was told you were only allowed one vacuum cleaner or your whole family will be blown up in a terrible accident. So I would say because they're more versatile with the suck, you know, a cylinder is more versatile, but combined with a power head, I'll know I'll get the deep clean carpet. So that's what I'd choose. But that wasn't the question. But anyway, I think I've answered you. Tyler, thank you for the question. Isaac Howard, as an eBayer myself, I would like to buy off you as I can tell you know what you're selling and how to send it without it getting damaged. Well, that wasn't a question. But yes, I did have sold quite a few bits on eBay. One thing did get damaged recently. A part apparently got damaged. Um, unfortunately, so I refund, part refunded that purchaser. Most of the things have turned out okay. A lot of the stuff I have been selling on eBay recently though has got the original box, which does help to prevent them from being damaged. Right, Dan Jones. Hi, when you do a suction test, I think a circle of blue tack would make a really good seal on hose ends that don't lend themselves to fitting the pressure dew... Oh, dewberry. I wonder, dewberry, I think he means. I don't know how you spell dewberry. I think it's D-O-O-B-R-E. I just say Dubri when I can't think of a name. Dubri, thingamajig, what shall I call it? Um, yes, especially pit fitting. The blue tack should be easy to squidge in holes. Yes, that is an idea, Dan, but I don't really... Those suction tests are just a rough guide. They're not an accurate. I'm not a scientist. I don't have the proper stuff. To do it properly, you need to have specific test carpet. Um, you know, I don't think the average person in a domestic situation can do all the scientific things unless they've purchased all the correct equipment. And even then, you know, person, you know, as I said, I just do the suction test. If I remember, it's a bit of fun just to say, oh, that's got that much suction. And it's not designed to say this is the best cleaner because it's got more suction than this one. But anyway, that's a good idea, uh, Dan. Uh, Greg Bouchard, right. I'm sure a lot of you know Greg if you've got a vacuum cleaner channel. Hi, mate, you do a really good job on here, mate. Have a good day, ma. Have a good day, mate, mate. How are you? Okay, mate. Keep up the good work on here, mate. You do a really good job on here, mate. Have a good day, mate, from Greg Bouchard. You do a really good job on here, mate. You do a really good job on here, mate, mate. Have a good day, mate, from Greg. Thanks, Greg. I think Greg is saying I do a really good job on YouTube. So thank you. I do try my best. Jordan Hagen. Please, please. Oh, it's not really a question. I'll have to. I'll, well, I'll, I'll try and remember to put the link. Please, please. And you link the video on the Hoover Vortex. You mentioned one in the past about the lawsuit too. I would love to see, well, the lawsuit video is on my channel somewhere. Um, it's probably under the title Dyson Sue's Hoover or something. The other one I'll try and remember, but it's not, doesn't say Vortex. It's not my video. It's how the Hoover Vortex was designed. And I think it's just called Vacuum Cleaner Marketing. So if you type that into YouTube, you should find it, but it doesn't have Hoover in the title, which is why a lot of people haven't found it. I have linked to it on my uh, Facebook page in the past. Is that another delivery coming? I don't know. Daisy will bark if it is. Hang on. Lot of activities going on. Despite being in tier three. Oh no, I know it's the recycling. So in a minute, a great big uh, recycling lorry will just go past the front of the house. So I'll just pause for that. So anyway, um, Jordan, look up vacuum cleaner marketing. I'll try and remember to put the link uh, under this and I'll pause while these men who are shouting uh, take away all our recycling. <sighs> Sorry about that. Don't you just hate YouTube sometimes? I don't know why, but I can't, after that last question, I can't, it doesn't let you scroll, keep scrolling. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, I don't know, it happens on my iPad. It's, I've got the other things. I've got my MacBook now, so 
you may notice there's a dent in it. I dropped, fortunately, an empty mug of coffee on it when I was on holiday in Northumbria. Um, oh, it was this year, I did manage to get away. Um, I certainly did a lot of stamping about and swearing, so good job I wasn't filming. <laughs> anyway, I thought, oh, I'm gonna have to buy a new computer, I can't bear that, but I've got used to it. <laughs> it still works anyway. Right, so I can see things a little bit more. It's, um, there we go. That's it. Right, that's Sir Jordan. Christina Marie Latimer. Import a Bissell clean view from USA, please. No, I won't be doing that. Um, Christina obviously doesn't realize I have imported some vacuums, obviously mainly Hoover ones. The price of the vacuum is not an issue. You know, pretty cheap vacuum in the USA, but once you add the shipping and the import charges, it normally triples, triples the price of it. So if you want me to buy a Bissell for $90, say, it could end up costing me $300. So I have got a Bissell actually, a Bissell machine I've imported from the USA that you haven't seen yet, but it is not a clean view. It's something we can't buy over here. Bissell aren't a big name in vacuum cleaners in the UK. They're more known for their carpet washers. They have um, some cordless machines now, and of course the Crosswave. But as far as mains powered, there is, yes, there is a new cylinder with a power head, but it looks very like the hot point one I've got. It's probably made in the same factory. I might get one of those if I see one for a hundred pounds in this country, but I'm not gonna spend the full price. I think it's 250 now or something. It's on offer occasionally. So I, I've no intention on importing, sorry, a cheap Bissell that's gonna end up costing me a fortune. If I import a vacuum, it has to be one I really, really want. And, it's, and it tends to be Hoover ones because I'm willing to pay the extra, but I'm not willing to pay, you know, a lot of money for a vacuum I don't want. Um, so, you know, I can only buy so many, I'm afraid. Callum Lindsay videos. I loved last year's and the year before that, those advent calendar videos. I, th I think I've done more than two years of videos. Anyway, for obvious reasons, I, well, there's lots of reasons I couldn't do the advents this year. Hopefully next year, I'll bring back the advent series and the Christmas day unboxings, but Apart from that, I don't think it's appropriate to do this year and I haven't been able to be at home a lot. Just wait for the recycling lorry to go. Goodbye. Oh, it's not that I know it might not be recycling. It might be the normal bin. The recycling will be coming along later. Hopefully I'll finish the video before then. Right. Um, here we are. Greggles? Is that Greggles magic? I'm glad we have Roger to show us the many vacuums that companies has given us over the years. Well, thank you, Greggles. Obviously, I can't show you every vacuum. I do try and show you a mixture. Admittedly, I've done quite a lot of Hoovers recently, but I do have a lot you've not seen. Even I've forgotten how many I've got. So there is a lot more coming. Lots of different makes lots of different types corded cordless bag bagless new and vintage floor washers carpet washers robotic vacuums i've enough enough products to fill maybe three years of videos twice a week so lots to come justin what is a cheaper bagged vacuum cleaner that you would recommend that goblin i think that i've recently shown you when it was on offer i think it was 39 pounds for that money i would say because i've used it i can't say what every you know there might be better ones that are cheap but one off the top of my head that i've used myself so the goblin you can see the video of that um Brian AR15, Merry Christmas from the US. You mentioned the suppressor a lot. What is its purpose? Well, I've, I've told 
a lot of you what my the purpose of the suppressor is if you've seen any of my videos um, possibly the last video I mentioned the suppressor was this 560 or the Hoover senior I had to remove the suppressor because it went kaput I don't think American cleaners have them for some reason but in the UK vacuum cleaners are fitted with um, suppressors which are supposed to stop the electric motor from interfering with TV and radio reception so in the old days you could be watching the TV or listening to the radio and sometimes if your neighbor was close the neighbor vacuuming next door could affect the picture or the reception of your radio so suppressors were fitted to to stop the interference and that's why we have them but because they can get damp and they can age they can blow um, the Hoover senior it didn't blow the machine just started smelling and it, it, it still worked but I started getting this burning smell so I turned it off and I looked at the suppressor and it was leaking a brown liquid from it so I removed it and they work perfectly well but this it's very controversial the vacuum will work without suppressor and because we have digital radio digital TV it doesn't affect that it doesn't affect your internet it doesn't affect your streaming service but somebody is say, has said in comments before that if you don't have one the um, carbon brushes of the motor will wear out really quickly so I don't know most people I know that collect vacuums who mention the suppressor always remove them as a matter of course before they blow up because inevitably and they're not not inevitably but often because I've known it to happen in videos where they've gone pop and sometimes if they're the big suppressor the metal barreled ones that old hoovers are fitted with it can cause some damage if they go so you know I'm still a bit on the fence because I'm a bit worried that I've removed suppressors some cleaners and it's going to cause them to wear out quicker quicker but the fact I hardly use the vintage ones is I don't think it's a much of an issue but yes quite a few videos there's been a little bit of uh, <laughs> bit of fireworks and bit of smoke hasn't there well that's been answered for you anyway Brian We'll see. Hi Roger, what are your thoughts on the evolution of Shark brand vacuums? I remember when the brand arrived here in Canada that they were not very good. However, years later they are extremely good. Seasons greetings, Robert C. Uh, it says Will C at the top and Robert C at the bottom. Um, yeah, we didn't have the earlier Shark, I think the Euro Pro type things. I think when Shark I don't know much about the history, but I think when Shark started, they probably just bought in designs from other companies, you know, made in China, just badged them with their own um, name. And then they started designing and manufacturing themselves. And again, Shark cleaners, people are very divided on them. Um, they're not I prefer them to, as far as bagless goes, I prefer the Shark upright to a, a Dyson upright. I'd go for a powered lift away over a Dyson any day because I think they're easier to use, especially on stairs with the lift away feature and they get under furniture. And they have some good design ideas. Whatever people say about Shark, they have some good ideas and they do tend to listen to the consumers and they do evolve their products at the moment I think they're in a bit of a there's nothing to excite me about the cleaners they've sort of got their lift away models and they're cordless and I think they're good um, but I've never owned one long enough I mean my mum has a shark cordless that I bought her that she does use daily I recently did that clean up video that was my mum's so I can get an idea of how how shark cleaners work when they're used all the time because I don't use mine all the time you know um, I would grab one occasionally so I can't comment on the reliability but they have changed a, a big fault of the sharks was the the tube that went from the head you know that flexible tube would split and a lot of a lot of criticism against shark was they would replace it but they would replace the whole head even though it was only that part that needed replacing 
not environmentally friendly. Um, but they have changed the material they use. So they've, they've realized that that is a weak point. Um, a lot of cleaners do use that sort of see-through flexible hose. Um, they can split, so they've changed it. So I'm assuming there'll be less problems with that. So they do listen to the consumers and they are the number one, I believe they are now, the number one brand in the UK and I think they're the number one brand in the USA um, as far as sales go. So they are popular with the general public who just want a vacuum cleaner to clean the home. They're not like us, not like you and me. If you're watching this now, you're not just interested in vacuum cleaners, Just you just want one just to pick up the dirt. You're interested in a, a deeper way like I am. So we're a bit different. And I read uh, comments from people who are into vacuums and a lot of them don't like sharks, some do. So it doesn't matter if you like them or not. They are very, very popular in USA and the UK. They are, you know, overtaking other manufacturers because people are buying them and liking them. Whether that will continue, whether they'll decide they don't want another shark if theirs goes wrong after two years or whatever. But people like them, the general public like shark vacuums. So yeah, I think they've got some good ideas. They could be a bit more environmentally friendlier, perhaps. Um, but yeah, I see them getting bigger and bigger and even more popular and producing new and innovative designs. So they are a newish company, but you know, they're giving the other vacuum cleaner manufacturers a run for their money. Thanks for the question, Robert. <sighs> well, this is not really a question. Mad watermelon. I love how chunky the plastic is on the Electrax 500s. Well, they're fairly chunky, but they do have the weak point, as I pointed out on my 550 video, the handle and the handle grip is a bit of a weak point on those. But yeah, they're better made than a lot of cleaners that you can buy now. Uh, Rept TV2, what is your favorite Dirt Devil product? I know they are very cheap cleaners, but they have some sort of charm to them in my eyes. You have a great channel, have been watching for a while. Me and my mom love to see your Instagram posts. Thanks, Rept. Well, Rept, Dirt Devil, I assume, yes, you're American, must be American. Dirt Devil, again, are not a brand that's big in the UK. The most people would know of Dirt Devil in the UK is from their handy vacuum cleaner that was heavily advertised sort of in the 90s on TV, and a lot of people bought those, and a lot of those are available on eBay UK. As far as mains powered up pipes and cylinders, there was some, they were virtually, you know, they were just a very small brand because at the time, when they were, in, when they were sort of available, wide widely the the market was dominated by hoover and electrolux in the sort of mid price and then sort of a cheaper goblin and then dyson started coming onto the market and there was a period when the vax tub type cleaner was the best selling vacuum so i don't have a favorite dirt devil product because i only have about three i've got uh you know i've got i've obviously got the the Dirt Devil Handy. I've got a Dirt Devil Hardy, which is like a hard boxed version of the Handy. Uh, the Broomy is quite quirky. And oh, what's the other Dirt Devil, that flatter style, sort of carpet sweeper style Dirt Devil um, broom. I can't remember what that's called. I'll put a picture of that one. So well, out of those then, I don't know, probably the Broomy, maybe. I don't don't have really much to do with Dirt Devil. There's the you know they will end up probably all getting sold when I you know start selling even more than I have sold this year. Huskies vacuums and sweepers. Oh, Husky has just said. Also, I'm the one that watches videos end to end. Well, thanks for that. It's nice that uh, my efforts don't go unnoticed. Uh, Philip Melin. Hi, Rod, Rod, d d d d I think, um, I don't know if that's being nasty or what, putting two Ds, because there isn't any D in Roger, and he's put two capital Ds. I don't correct people anymore when they spell my name wrong. Sometimes if they ask Rod a question, I may respond by saying, well, I don't know who he is. 
Anyway, well, I'll answer this question. I have an apartment with 85% hardwood floors and two dogs. What are your thoughts on a bagged canister type vacuum? I would like the best there is. Filtration, suction and overall performance. No budget. Love, or, love your videos. I think I'm addicted both to you and the videos. Best regard, Philip. Oh, well, perhaps Philip wasn't uh, having a dig by saying Rod G -g -g. Anyway, it's Roger Philip. Roger. R O G E R, that's it. Roger as in you know, Rogering someone. My name can have other I work this is a family show, but when you Roger someone in the UK, well it used to be a slang word for something else. I won't say what. <laughs> Again, I assume Philip is not in the UK because he said canister uh instead of cylinder. Um, well, you know, personally, for me, I would go for SIBO. But if you've got 85% hardwood floors, do you need a power head? Depends how much carpet you have. I would just look at SIBO and Miele, but personally, SIBO, if you want a bit better quality and longevity, go for a SIBO. Have a look at the E3 Premium, the D4 Premium. Um, I know they're at the higher end of the price bracket in the USA. Then they're, they're sort of normal priced here. They're not expensive as such here compared to like a cordless Dyson. You can get for much cheaper than the Dyson V11. You know, you could buy the SIBO Felix Pet much cheaper. And that will that's five year guarantee and it will last you more than five years. I can't see a Dyson V11 in regular use lasting five years. The battery certainly won't. I would consider even, I don't know, have you considered a SIBO Felix? Because they do have a bit of versatility. Um, you can, you know, you can use them on hard floors without the power nozzle. You can buy all sorts of different attachments. It will convert into a, a large-ish handheld by pushing down the handle, taking off the power head, and you can use the hose. You can get an extension hose for it. You can get all sorts of tools. So you can make this really versatile. Um, so just look at SIBO, to be honest, that's what I would say. But it's up to you, it's your money. Depeche, Depeche Mode Music. He's put the laughing emoji. OMG, how the hell have they attempted to package that? Oh, well, that's, uh, that's just the way that that Electrolux 550 was sent to me. But fortunately, it did survive which I was pleased about. Uh, a list photography. I think uh, it, Mike, I think Mike won my competition where I was giving away a Hoover, no, a Maytag satellite. But because I had two winners, I had a winner from the USA as well. I also um, had to give a, give a, I bought a vacuum cleaner from Amazon for my USA winner. I think, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember who won that now, but that was a, I don't know if that was a competition for 50,000 subscribers, it might have been. I'll be doing some giveaways if I get to 100,000. Anyway, love these Electrolux uprights. Well, that, I should have had it out really. It's polished up very well. It looks even better now, even better. I got some wax like I did with this one. This has been waxed, a hard wax polish. I don't know if you can quite see. You have to apply it with a damp microfiber cloth and they come in a tub and the wax is hard and you have to you know, rub it and then you just t -t 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 rub it into the uh, plastic, wait for it to dry to a haze and then buff it off and then you can add another layer or two if you want to and I found it's really good on disguising uh, scratches. Love these Electrolux uprights, shame it does not have a neon light in the switch. Well, you can easily buy one and put it in. Yeah, this one does have the neon light. I thought it sounded good on power down. Maybe after a good clean up, the motor will be fine. I think it needs a bit of lubrication, that's all. A couple of questions for your Q&A video. What's the most powerful domestic, not commercial, vacuum slash upright by wattage Ooh, ever made? Also, what is the most powerful domestic, not commercial vacuum you have by suction power in your collection? Perhaps you have a, perhaps 
have a top five shootout or suck off using your suction gauge. Um, uh, right, these are two different questions. Wattage you're asking about for the upright. Oh, crikey. See, I don't know. I think it could be that Hoover Pure Power. What was the wattage? I'll have to get my iPad. Oh, Daisy, you smell. You're going to have to go to that vet and get your teeth done, darling. Right, hang on. I have a feeling it's a Hoover Pure Power and it's a silver and red one. Oh, it was a while ago. Well, I've got 15 videos on Pure Power, according to this. Oh. I think I'll have to make this a two-parter. So after this question, I think I'll uh, have a break and then start again. It's my fault, because I, I natter on, don't I? Oh, well, thank you. Oh, this is annoying. I ask it to show all the Pure Power videos. All right, it has now. Right, this is the one. Um, I think it's a 2100 watt. I've done a demo of it in 2014. And it's the uh, PU2122 Hoover Pure Power Pets 2100 watts. I think they're the last Pure Power Enigma is 350 watts. So I would say as wattage goes, I think that's the highest. And the most powerful domestic vacuum, oh, I've done that one, the wattage, and the most powerful vacuum by suction power mm. it's either I can't recall I don't think you've seen seen either it's either a Hoover Discovery which is a bagless vacuum from the 90s or early 2000s I think it's 90s or it could be another vacuum you haven't seen um, it's a Thomas Thomas, oh, what is it? It's a multi-purpose machine. It looks like a big cylinder machine. You can use it as a water filtration vacuum. You can use it to pick up liquids, but it also has the shampoo spray extraction thing. And I did the suction gauge in a video, which which will be next year. Um, I did hint at it on my Instagram, and I can't remember the, the what it get, went to on the gauge. I think it might have been 100. But I think I put a picture of the gauge and said, look at this. So that was that there. It was the Thomas. Um, oh, God, I can't don't know what it's called. <laughs> oh, dear. Thomas. Right. It's a Thomas, which is a German manufacturer. No, crikey. Type in Thomas and what comes up first? Thomas, the tank engine. You need to type in Thomas vacuum. Here we are. Robert Thomas aqua vacuum all right i've got a pet here's a picture i've got a pet and family aqua plus as far as i can remember when i did the unboxing and initial first look video of that ages ago i think that had the highest suction so far that i've seen right just one more then and then i'll have to go into part two david galloway hello david he's uh a long time viewer often comments thank you for your support david david says regarding the electrolux 550 video and especially delightful video i actually laughed when i saw the box i could say i can't imagine it being shipped like that all dirty but i've come to realize if not entirely accept that a great many people do their best and what i find absolutely appalling others think okay and save us and save us from them ha 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 enormously enjoyed seeing it clean seeing it cleaned up it looks surprisingly lovely christmas cheer thanks david it is satisfying i did uh, i thought well i'll just you know i show you a bit of a wipe down in a video but it's not what it needs you know it looks fine cosmetically uh, especially after i've waxed polished it but it does need a proper strip down but it's you know it's at some point I will start getting to them but my priority for for now and for early next year is to quite sell quite a lot of vacuums because I'm inundated and I can't see the treasures amongst I mean I'm not saying they're all rubbish but I've got so many that some of the treasures I've got are sort of tucked away just you know hibernating ready to be brought back into the limelight and you know given a full proper treatment 
and I hope to video that but I just need to start clearing clearing some of the bulk some of the cleaners that no longer interest me but one I can say is the classic machines from the 70s 80s the Hoovers and Electroluxes they're not going anywhere they're the sort of core models I'll be keeping you know as I get older one day I'll get down to just maybe 10 because I can't think what's going to happen when I you know pass away I don't want to be left with someone we're left with clearing out loads of vacuums they'll all end up in the skip I expect so I'd rather sell them now get some money and then let other people enjoy them right well on that uh, note I'll I'll pause I'll go and have a little bit of a break myself and I'll come back and answer the rest of your questions so thanks for watching this video I'm afraid there's no more Q&A videos this year so if you ask me any questions under this video and wanting a shout out I can't oblige I'm afraid but hopefully next year I'll do some more Q&A's not just at Christmas and I'll certainly be doing a Q&A session um, when I do I'll probably when I eventually reach a hundred thousand subscribers which I hope to next year I'll do a whole week of sort of celebratory uh, videos just to thank my subscribers so that will include shout outs and requests and things like that so that's the end of part one of the Q&A session the next section will be coming up today some at some point maybe in a couple of hours from this one I'm not sure yet I'm just thinking I've got to edit this it's all very well sitting here talking to you that's quick but then I've got to edit it and then I've also got to add the illustrations and I've got to add your little questions at the bottom you wouldn't believe how long it takes only the people who do videos realize there's a lot more work in making videos for YouTube than you see you get to see the final edited result I could have a on average a 20 minute video I might have an hour and a half of actual footage from that video because that of course includes things go wrong and what have you so don't underestimate some of you do I know you do but don't underestimate the amount of time people take doing the whole experience of YouTube it's it is it's pretty full-on if you want to succeed on YouTube you've really got to put the time in um, unless you just want to do it as a hobby that's how I started anyway it's just a hobby I was just sharing my love of vacuum cleaners with other people and very surprisingly I found that a lot of you also share my enthusiasm for the humble domestic vacuum so Daisy's fast asleep that's uh, that's the effect I have on folk see you in part two when I'll be answering more of your questions bye for now